Hey guys, it's Maggie and I am back today with a video talking all about tracking your cycles because it's not just for baby making. I know that my regular viewers may jump to conclusions and I'm going to let you think whatever you're going to think about this. But I wanted to talk about tracking your cycles because it really is something that goes way beyond just trying to get pregnant. There are a number of reasons that people will track their cycles beyond trying to conceive. So I am going to talk about the reasons that I track my cycle, why I've been doing it off and on for about two years now, and how I believed it helped me. Just a little bit of background for anybody who might be new here. I have something called Crohn's disease. It's an autoimmune disorder of the GI tract. I've had a number of surgeries that have kind of reconstructed the way that I go to the bathroom because I now have an ostomy bag. Oddly enough, the reason that I started tracking my cycles has almost nothing to do with Crohn's disease. I'm part of a number of Facebook groups for IBD and I've noticed a lot of females saying, hey, do you guys notice that your symptoms are worse during your time of the month? And that is 100% true. I've definitely been there. Even though I don't have the pieces to go to the bathroom anymore, my phantom rectum is just so active during my time of the month. I even have friends that don't have any GI issues and they have them during their period. So there's definitely some sort of correlation there. But let me get into why I started tracking my cycle um, about two years ago, I would say it was probably around April time of 2019 and I was really struggling with something I had never experienced before. I didn't know what was going on with me and to be honest, I did not relate it to my period whatsoever. It was not during a time that I was trying to um, get pregnant because Zach and I were, you know, working on the barn and we were working full time. I was a nurse in the city. He was in finance in the city. Our wedding wasn't happening for like another year and a half. We definitely were not trying to have kids. So that was not the reason I started tracking my cycle. What started to happen was I noticed a sort of cyclic depressive period. And I have never had depression in my life. Something I, I've never experienced before. And it was so shocking. It came on so suddenly. I... I didn't know what had caused it or what the heck was going on. I went on for a couple months like that where for a couple weeks I would just be so not myself. I would cry over nothing. I would not act like myself. I would sleep all day. I would find myself crying at like such inappropriate times. It was terrible. And then I would suddenly be okay and I'd be fine for a couple weeks, and they kept getting worse and worse and worse, and I have definitely, <laughs> I have a video, I will put it in the little thingy here where I talk about really how bad it got. I don't like remembering that because um, it was bad, it was bad. So if you're interested in hearing that story, I'll link it somewhere up here. But essentially, it scared the absolute crap out of me. I started looking into psychiatrists because I felt like I needed to see somebody. And in doing that research and trying to, you know, type in my symptoms, I started to see things about it possibly being related to my cycle, which I never really paid attention. I mean, I would track my period on apps and whatnot. Every once in a while, I wasn't super active on it, but I generally knew how my periods were. They were fairly regular. They were like between 27 days and maybe 37 days in length. They would kind of alter 
by four or five days, which was not terrible. It wasn't like I was going months without a period, but there were a few days of fluctuations. Anyway, I started to see that it could possibly be related to my cycle, and I was thinking, well, let me start tracking my period a little bit more. So I was tracking my period, and I realized about halfway between when I started my period and, you know, the day before I started the next one is about when the switch would flip on me and I would start getting these depressive episodes, which made me think, is it when I ovulate? Is that when it's happening? Went to a gynecologist. They immediately wanted to put me on birth control. They put me on Zoloft. Um, went to my regular doctor. She just continued me on um, the Zoloft and the birth control as well. And I wasn't super thrilled about that, but I was diagnosed with PMDD. And that is premenstrual dysphoric disorder, which was terrible. What I will say is that the birth control did help. The Zoloft did not help. I actually just stopped taking it because I never noticed any difference. We tried adjusting the dose and I felt like it wasn't doing anything, whereas the birth control did. So at that point I was like, well, you know, the symptoms are still kind of around, but the birth control is helping. Let me really start tracking my cycles and see at what point I'm ovulating. So that's when I started tracking with ovulation kits. There are a million different kinds online. There are expensive ones, there are cheap ones. I just go for the cheap ones because it's something that you do um, you want to do pretty often when you are tracking your cycle. You don't want to just test once and be done with it because then you don't get a clear picture of when you ovulate. So this one is by Pregmate. It's like a, a dual kit where it has the ovulation test as well as pregnancy tests in it. And this allowed me to predict about when I was going to ovulate, which would kind of give me a little heads up that, hey, your symptoms may be coming and it would allow me to be able to tell Zach like, hey, I'm gonna ovulate soon. I'm probably gonna be a little off. Basically, you need to walk like you're walking on eggshells around me. And what ovulation tests do is they look for a luteinizing hormone. They look for a spike in it and that's why you have to test pretty much from like day eight, day 10 of your cycle around then until you reach that spike. So I'm actually gonna show you last month's cycle. I decided to take the tests almost every day because the month before I had a little bit of a weird cycle um, and I actually had two LH spikes which make me think that my body tried to ovulate, it didn't work out, and then it tried it again which is why I wound up with a 35 day cycle. I'm doing a lot of research on it. <laughs> but on this sheet that I'm going to show you, I basically taped all of my ovulation tests too. I started on cycle day 13 because I was tracking prior to that, but I didn't start taping them to the sheet till I was like, I think something's coming up. My handwriting is terrible on this, but on March 31st is when I started to tape my ovulation test to the sheet of paper so I could see if the test line was getting any darker. And with ovulation tests, you wanna see the test line, which is the left-sided line, the one that's closer to where you dip it in your urine. And they say your LH spike is when that line is just as dark or darker than the control line, which is the one that's on the right. So the very first test, you can tell the test line is definitely lighter than the control line. And at that point I was testing two times a day just because sometimes LH spikes are really quick. They might only be a couple hours, so you might miss it if you don't do it a couple times per day. Sometimes your spikes are more of a nice like mountain and they are smooth and that's kind of how mine was. You'll see it stayed darker on my test lines for uh, actually a couple of days. But you can see at the 4 p.m. on April 1st um, test strip, that's about when it got just as dark, if not maybe a little bit darker. The one before that in the morning looks like it, it might be equal. Sometimes they're hard to tell. You kind of just have to use your best judgment with them. And it's all about an estimate really. It's a prediction that you're ovulating. It is not a guarantee that you're ovulating or at least ovulating well. So that spike continued for a couple days and it really started to mellow out by April 4th. You can see that the line is getting lighter. And basically what they say is when you see that first spike, like that first dark, um, equally as dark or darker line than the control line, you have about 24 to 36 hours before you're supposedly going to ovulate. So so that is what tells you, 
hey, you better hit up your partner and say, let's go make a baby, <laughs> if that is what you were trying to do. But what I was looking at was, okay, I know I have about 24 to 36 hours before Maggie gets into her mood and um, the world needs to watch out for her. I've also been asked a few times about ovulation and cycle tracking apps, which my favorite one is Ovia. I've tried a number of them. I think that is by far the best one that I've tried so far. So if I can find a link to it, I will put it below um, along with the ovulation strips that I use. So I use them in conjunction. And the really great thing about Ovia is they have pre-written symptoms. So you can kind of like click on what you're experiencing and plug that in. Um, you can add photos, you can put notes down, you can put in a positive ovulation test, you can track your period on there. It's got pretty much everything. And just to update about the PMDD, I had my colectomy and all of that. I had my kidney taken care of. I had a lot of things going wrong inside of me and I got a lot of those things taken care of. But back in December of 2019, I stopped taking birth control because I was having surgery. Just really didn't want to mess with it. I was going to miss it for a few days anyway. Um, so I stopped taking it and I have not taken it since. And the PMDD did not return. I couldn't tell you why it started in the first place. My assumption is that my body was getting sick and maybe the hormones were all out of balance in me. I really honestly could not tell you. I just know that it's gone. But I am still tracking my cycle for a couple of reasons. I'm going to let your mind wander with that. <laughs> but the one that I will talk about is symptom tracking because I always notice, like I said before, the phantom rectum gets way worse during my period. I also have symptoms related to when I ovulate because of the increase in progesterone. It has really helped me become very aware of my body. I think it's so cool. I notice um, during the month when I gain weight more, um, when my chest hurts more, it's always like within a couple of days of ovulating my chest hurts and then it will hurt until I start to bleed. I notice like when I'm cramping and it helps me identify when certain pains might be more of just my regular monthly cycle than it is Crohn's disease, which is super helpful because I don't want to blame pain on Crohn's if it's not actually Crohn's. I just have found it super interesting. It really, like I said, has made me so much more aware of what my body's doing, what the hormones are doing, and where their levels are at. I really, I really enjoy tracking it. I just find it super interesting. So I'm going to put a really good website that I found that goes over the monthly cycle and how it works and what hormones are increasing and decreasing throughout the cycle because these hormones play a lot into how you're feeling like progesterone I know can deal with some of the GI issues and make you feel kind of like what it's so interesting I love this stuff but anyway I'm gonna put that website below so you guys can take a look at it I am not the expert when it comes to this stuff but I can at least tell you why I'm tracking my cycle and how I found it useful and what I'm using to do it so that way if you're interested in looking at that stuff and just really becoming more familiar with what your body's doing, you can do that. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit different from me talking Crohn'sy Crohn's-ness, but yes, I hope that you are feeling good and I will see you in the next. Bye, guys.